marginal note for Lord Bly. But leave it on all duplicates of the report for distribution, darling. Every single one. Sir John Wilder's office. Oh, good morning, darling. How far are you from finishing Wilder's report on Yugoslavia? I'll need at least another hour. I'm not going as fast as I was last night. Well, I'm not complaining. Uh, look, I want you to play back that tape about Naranda for me again, will you? Well, hold on, Minister. I'll have to change tapes. Let me have my cigars, Mrs. J. <sighs> I know you don't approve. But you know, I, I once knew a man who smoked a cigar after breakfast every day. And he lived to be 90. It's here. I will also, in case of second thoughts by your immigration people, be living in a house sold to me by the ambassador for special situations and trade, who, knowing me, would hardly agree with any other official of the government who decided I was an undesirable, deportable alien. Have you thought of that? Oh, yes. And you don't object? The only undesirable people in this country that I worry about are neither deportable or alien. They're natives. Uh, that'll do, darling. <clears throat> I think I have Wilder now. Well, might I ask where, Minister? Oh, on a fast plane somewhere where he'll remain unheard of for a while. Unless he resigns. He'll never throw in the sponge, not against you. No, oh, I hope not. I have a vested interest in his success. Not his disgrace. I think his wife has him, too. Whatever Lady Wilder thinks is no concern of ours. Now, what does matter is Wilder's country house in Naranda. And that's more than enough. What Lady Wilder thinks is difficult to ignore. Listen for yourself. That was Freddily. Asking if Darling is in. You will tell that girl not to ring you here again. The Foreign Office? That would be more active. That's the place to keep your foreign affairs going. Well, were you able to hear that? How did you come by that? Oh, I didn't bug them, Lord Bly. I know you were there all night. Well, I picked up some of Sir John's tapes by arrangement. This must have been left running during a private conversation. I removed it quite innocently and put on a new one. No doubt uh, as innocently as Sir John would like Lady Wilder to think of his association with Miss Vanick. Uh, you know her, don't you? Well, Fredolina, yes. Let me have that tape for later in the morning. Well, you'll be at the Yugoslav Embassy the rest of the morning. Sir John told me you'll go straight there and stay all day. Sir John really shouldn't use my private secretary to read him my appointment book. Well, the question really is, who is working for whom? Well, Wilder began to use my young Mr. Hindlesham against me, long before I used you against him. Only defensively. Just as my loyalty as private secretary to any ambassador could be exceeded by my loyalty to the minister to whom that ambassador is responsible. Good morning, minister. Uh, John asked to speak. You've got this. But before you start on it, I'd like you to take round that stuff you've almost finished. All night, now all day. At least he made sure he got some sleep. Didn't you? I told you I had things to get straight here. So you told me at five o'clock this morning. What the hell do you do here at that hour? Oh, lots of people. The hardline Communist Party objection to participation by private British enterprise can be overcome by Minister Councillor Kittrich. Isn't that right? Isn't what right? Sir John's opinion of Kittrich. If John's asking you to type that part of the report, he's taking you into his confidence. You know that. You sound surprised. Oh. I thought I'd avoided sounding surprised. Uh, then you sounded as if you avoided sounding surprised. Why so? I'm his private secretary. Uh, can you be as specific as to your staff position? Yes. I'm his friend. Uh, then he'll have told you, as he told me, that today we're all going to help him bowl a leg break at our minister. If he hadn't told me, you'd have been indiscreet just then. I thought you foreign office professionals were never that. Not that I've ever found them much else. You're mooching and brooding about this office like a favourite bloodhound, wondering if he's going to be surprised by the new cat. Odd you should think of yourself as a cat. Are you the sort that scratches when it's stroked? I might as well ask if you, Rover, are the sort that bites when it's patted. Oh, don't worry. Between us, you in your doggy amateur way, me and my catty professional, we can make sure nothing goes wrong for our master today. If anything does, 
That can be right for him just the same. Mm, that's an obscurity he didn't explain to me. No pussy. So stay in your basket. Marginal note for Lord Bly. But leave it on all duplicates of the report for distribution, darling. Every single one. Begins. It was to see Keedrish that I returned to London as soon as I had landed in Belgrade. I was acting upon information of which you must have been ignorant. Otherwise, you would not have sent me to Belgrade. Straight to the Yugoslav Embassy here in London. Let's have that again, Sir John. The utter blinding impudence. I thought you were rushing off to the Foreign Office first thing this morning. Destroy Caswell Glass. I shall. When you take to knocking on my door, I know it's time to go somewhere. Well, this isn't our bedroom, is it? But if you miss me up there, that's how it should be. I quite like missing you. Had you not come down, I should have come up. Put this on there. Will you, and listen to it. What is it? A grenade? My innocence. <laughs> oh, don't be such a fool, John. You may be able to lose it every week, but that doesn't mean to say you'll ever get it back. Once? We'll play it and see. Fredelina no longer exists for me. If she does for you, then you don't either. I mean for me, also. Well, whatever you mean. Listen to this, and then you won't. Where are the deeds? What? I'm here for the deeds. Well, take them if you know what you're talking about. You, last night, agreed that we should let Mr. Naranda of Malia buy our country house. Those deeds? Those, before you change your mind. Why should I change my mind? Because, John, when you get caught, you get spiteful. You agreed to let Mr. Naranda buy our house last night because you thought I'd swallowed your lies about Fredelina hook, line and stinker. Stinker? Stinker. But I don't carry these around in my dressing gown pockets. You carry spools. Well, I'd outplay the damn thing myself. You'll give me the deeds so that I can keep faith with Mr. Naranda. How can I? They're at the solicitors, surely. Whose? Yours or mine? I thought there was only ours. Did you? You're not still retaining that childhood sweetheart of yours, that chump Charlie. Charles. For personal contingencies, yes. Well, you have no personal contingencies this morning. This machine was on last night, going, recording, when you answered that phone for me. Listen, now, now listen, Pamela. You said to Dowling, who was on the telephone, is that you... Dowling. I said, is that you, Lincoln? And I corrected you. Now, I want you to hear yourself say that again. And consider what anybody who didn't know you were talking to somebody called Dowling might have misunderstood you to say. The deeds, please, and my arm. And later on, Fredelina called on that telephone. The machine was on, going, recording. And she said what you had said. She said, is that you, Dowling? But you thought, because she expected me to answer, you thought, she said, is that you, darling, because of her Yugoslav accent. You may not be out of your mind, but I think I am. Pamela, I have admitted enough in the past. Why should I lie about this one? Because, John, you thought you could get away with it. The only way that a man can get away with it is if his wife knows and doesn't divorce him. Yes, in that way, I have got away with it other times, and I'm very glad to have done. Very glad, Pamela. So, play this, then call me at the Foreign Office. No matter who they say I'm with, including the Prime Minister, get through to me. 
that he'd be in Downing Street. He doesn't come to you yet. Well, you come to me just this once, Pamela. You go into the foreign office in your dressing gown? No pyjamas? I'm going up to our bedroom, where my clothes are. And then to the foreign office. Yes, Dowling. Mr. John there. Come in. In there, is he? Hmm? The bathroom. Can you work this? Yes. Well, um, connect it up and start it and leave me with it, will you? Oh, even put it wrongly on the spike, did I? Yes. Where did this come from? John gave it to me. Well, until you fit it, you can't record on it. Oh, it's recorded on already. If there had been anything on it, you would have erased it the way you've got the control set. Absolutely nothing on it. Absolutely nothing on it. You're wrong, Lincoln. It's the most eloquent piece of tape ever manufactured. <laughs> very well. Listen for yourself. It's very intimate, Lincoln. Well, so is this. I can hardly leave it lying around. Well, there's no need to. Catch him outside if you rush. John Wilder's personal assistant, please. Uh, hello, Miss Denby. Lady Wilder speaking here. Um, I want you to take down this message for my husband. No, no, it's quite short, but I want you to take it down just the same. Tell him his wife rang in order not to disturb him when he got in. Tell him she inadvertently set the controls of the tape machine in such a way that any tape played upon it would erase itself in silence. However, the tape given to her still spoke for itself. After careful thought, she has no doubt about the truth now. No doubt whatsoever. Yes, that's all. Good morning. Has to be big. Even our family wouldn't. Well, it even if we brought them all over from Malia. There'll be other people over from Malia. Other people? Like whom? People who'll come and go. I'm going to turn it into a country hotel. <laughs> no. More like an asylum. 
there is something I'm not to know. On the contrary. You must know, so that you will know what to conceal should anybody ask. Anybody? Like who? Like a watchdog. A pink and grey British watchdog from the immigration department. Keeping out of this country people as black as we. Because I'm going to let hundreds in. <laughs> Morning, Lincoln. Morning, Peter. Is Rob lying? No. On his way, or has he his first appointment out? You find that open, Lincoln? Hmm? My door. No. Well, leave it as you found it, please. A Downing Street's waiting, you know. Precisely. Now, Lord Bly's office. Yes, Fred. No, he's gone straight to the Yugoslav Embassy. No, all day, he thinks, yes. No, I don't know what you might say to the PM to explain why he wasn't advised of my minister's movements in advance. Except perhaps it's usually assumed he knows everything. Right. Morning, Hindleton. You might knock. I was just on that line. What does number 10 want Lord Bly for today? Until I can be sure of your status, if any, in this ministry, perhaps you'd like to ask my master himself. All right. May I go in? And since he's not there, yes. Well, where is he? Well, uh, this time of the morning, wouldn't you assume on his way in? I'll leave it open, Henderson. I'm on my way out. Well, morning, Sir John. What have you got there? Dal and soap. What for? To wash with. In there. It's insanity in there. A grubby communal loo. It's no worse than the jungle discomforts Lord Bly has in mind for you. Procession's going nicely. Procession? Darling, Henderson, not to mention innocence from other departments, all establishing that Lord Bly has not come in today. Did Darling leave the report? No. I think you should have. What witnesses have you got lined up at one o'clock? Uh, a stroke of luck there. Uh, two assistant secretaries from the Home Office. They had an appointment with Lord Bly in any case. So, there are quite a lot of people to say that I couldn't find my minister this morning. And if it turns out that my minister was called to Downing Street himself, he'll receive me there. Take my report and, as usual, my credit. <laughs> oh, Sir John. I can inquire exactly where Lord Bly is before you make your move. I am the man's private secretary. Mm. <laughs> One has to wonder, Peter. I'm glad to say. Mr. Morning. Why not? Because he wasn't in, Sir John. Oh, what does that matter? Take the report up to his private secretary. You do realise that we'll be giving Hindlesham first look at it, and you did ask me to mark it minister only. I haven't been in the Foreign Service long, darling, but I've been in it long enough to know that a private secretary is supposed to be his minister's eyes. So, take it up and deliver it. Having typed it, you know that it's urgent. Whose eyes are you today? <coughs> you just worried pussy. Pussy? Two o'clock this morning, he was sure he knew what you were going to do today. No, he's not. Uh, breakfast for two, Jill, please. Lady Wilder, telephone.
until lunch. Whatever Darling thinks, all I'm going to do, Donald, is sit and wait. Until the whole Ministry have agreed that Lord Bly is God knows where. Peter? Come in, darling. Is that uh, Wilder's report on Yugoslavia? Shut the door. Come in. Sit down. If you don't break Sir John before lunch, he'll have broken me before dinner. <laughs> Sit down. Henderson as good as told me that at two o'clock this morning. Sir John will put only one construction on your presence here. You'll think you didn't go to the Yugoslav Embassy because I told you he was expecting you to go. And who told Sir John I'd go to the Embassy? The only person I told was my private secretary, Peter Henderson. Well, I suppose if you can serve two masters, so can he. But I won't stop Wilder. He'll blast both of us on sight. Have you got that tape? Nobody's blastable today. As for Hindlesham, well, I'll blast him when it suits me. You see, darling, it's not what you two young fellows tell Sir John and me that's important. It's what we tell one another through you, which is generally a lot of false information. So, your equal untrustworthiness to each of us is essential to both of us. And I did go to the Yugoslav Embassy. Of course he'll go. Oh. And Minister Councillor Kidridge will say he's agreed everything with you. That'll take two minutes, so Caswell will gallop straight here. Kidridge won't tell him that because I've already told Kidridge that Caswell is a capitalist of Victorian conviction. That's why he sent me on that wild goose chase to Belgrade instead of straight to Kidridge here in London. The negotiation isn't simply to infiltrate British capital into a Yugoslav socialist combinat. Combinat? Yes, a combinat. It's to winkle British capital into a Yugoslav combinat that is openly using Russian technicians and secretly sharing profits and costs with the Russians. The Russian hardline party members won't like it because it capitalizes communism. The British hardline financiers won't like it because it communizes capitalism. I thought you'd have understood all that without having to be told. Well, I've still to understand that Caswell's any sort of ist, except where it suits his pocket. <laughs> so has Minister Councillor Kitrish of the Yugoslav Embassy. He'll stalemate Caswell all day until I show my report to the Prime Minister who so likes to make quick, gritty, tough personal interventions. Darling! Is Lord Bly there yet? No, not yet. Close the door, Peter. Come in. I thought you were at the Yugoslav Embassy, Lord Bly. Uh, the PM rang. We have an appointment for lunch. I want you to confirm it. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, I couldn't get very far in the two minutes that... Uh, I spent at the Yugoslav Embassy this morning. Kidri thinks I'm the ghost of Gladstone. <laughs> so I walked out on him. If he does walk out on Kidri, Hendelson will tell me. Start up and eat your breakfast. this report down to three pages, will you? Let me have it uh, before lunch. Oh, but um, first, take out your notebook. I want to brief you for this meeting you've got with these Home Office people. Uh, you, uh, you didn't tell them that I'd be at the Yugoslav Embassy, I hope. No. 
Freddy, uh, just to confirm, Lord Bly will be lunching with the PM today. Yes, right. Uh, Freddy, uh, tell the PM I'll bring the main course myself. Something palatable from Yugoslavia. Yes, well, it could be 15 million pounds more in trade. <laughs> Well, I can't lunch with the PM and see these Home Office people, too. So you'll have to. Lunch or see? See. Keep them talking, but don't tell them anything. But under no circumstances tell Sir John Wilder. Do you understand? Yeah. It's Wilder hoped to get to the PM today with this report to show that he didn't need your control. Instead, you're taking your version. And Wilder may be going to Burma. With respect, Minister, uh, I don't understand how your version of the Yugoslav report could compel Sir John to accept a posting like that. It won't. But what will is the briefing that I'm now going to give you to these Home Office people. So take out your notebook. But why? I had no opportunity. He stayed at my elbow until he left for Downing Street. What time did he get in? While I was washing. Was my report in his hands or on your desk? In his hands. Then Darling gave it to him while you were washing. Is that consistent, Sir John? As your private secretary, knowing you were asking for Lord Bly, surely he'd have told you he'd seen him. As I've indicated, it's difficult to tell whose private secretary is who. When you had the opportunity to contact me, why did you keep me waiting two hours? I missed my lunch. I had to handle the Home Office. About what? Uh, Lord Bly told me under no circumstances to warn you. I'm aware that you keep on taking your life in your hands for me. But this time, do it at the trot. It needs to be at the trot if you're to be in time to stop the sale of your country house to Miranda. I only agreed to sell last night. And he's been under investigation for deportation ever since he arrived in Britain last week. Why? Well, for one thing, he got in under the name of Hobbs. That is his name. Yes, but in politics, it's Naranda. I never cared about his politics until I had to go and break him in Malia. And he was a communist. That's why he had to run when you exposed him. I didn't expose him as a communist, but as a bribable member of the Malian government who was accepting communist payoffs. His own brother-in-law, the Prime Minister out there, told me that he did it under orders as a political blind. I almost believed him. The Home Office believes that he wants your house because you're an ambassador. It gives him a rather special patron. You hold Her Majesty's commission. That is why he wants my house. He said so openly and plainly. They also believe he wants it because it's big. They've compared that fact with another. Do you know applications for diplomatic visas from Malians have tripled for next year? So? So? They're not diplomats. They're Malians who couldn't normally get past immigration. They'll congregate at Naranda's secluded country house without work permits. Naranda will get them work, and they won't go back to Mali. Ah, oh, good luck to them. You'll be smeared with conspiracy in the deportation proceedings if your house is still involved, and you uh, couldn't expect to remain an ambassador. Who told the Home Office about my house? Of oh, that was why I have no hesitation in disobeying my minister and warning you. Trot, Peter. Trot. Yes, I already did. My minister told the Home Office about your house, just as he no doubt told Naranda it was up for sale. I had a charming message from my wife this morning, which Lord Bly couldn't possibly have known about. Ah, he's torn that up for me, too. She likes Miranda, you see. Still, if one wishes to be a creature of government, I suppose one has to behave like one. Yes, Sir John? Jill, uh, get me Lady Wilder, will you please? Yes, sir. When did you first notice your spine going? Can I go, Sir John? Thank you.
She's at us. Why is that notice going up again? I tried to get you in London. There's still no way of telephoning here. As the house is up for sale again, there's obviously still a way of phoning the estate office. What made you go back on your word? Oh, don't tell me things went badly with Caswell today. I'm rather tired of that elderly gentleman getting all the blame for your total lack of character, which is congenital. Did you get the deeds? I brought them down here. Naranda's taken them to his solicitor. Naranda has been here today. Unfortunately, it appears that your signature is required. So, all you have to do now is to telephone your solicitor, who will tell Naranda that you don't intend to sign. That's what's on your mind, isn't it? It would be the simplest way. Particularly as Naranda, after dropping the deeds in London, is flying to Switzerland to get the money to buy the house that you won't sell tomorrow. Doesn't it strike you that Miranda is in a particular hurry? You are demonstrating why. However, Trina is still here. Who's Trina? His daughter. She's on her way to begin a new school term. She's here looking at the house which her father hasn't quite bought. She's making inventories of pieces that I might like to leave for him not to be able to buy. And you, John? If you are in any small way interested in retaining the unpaid services of that indispensable adjunct to an ambassador, the well-behaved wife will break the news to Trina yourself. I intended to break the news to Naranda. I still intend to when I can find a telephone and him. Leaving him to express his humiliation to his daughter? No, John, you express yours. Just consider this. Consider it. You would agree that I'm not very good with children. If you are really thinking about the girl's feelings, and not only yours and Miranda's, perhaps you would also agree that you should do this. You will find her in the old kitchen, not the new. It fascinates her. She wants to restore it. I didn't know there was an old kitchen. You'll have to show me where it is. It's where I found Fredelina, waiting for you. You sent me a message this morning, closing all that. There was nothing on that tape, John, and you know it. You thought that I would erase it all by mistake, but Dowling demonstrated otherwise. Where are you going? John, so that Naranda could go to Switzerland straight away, I undertook to drive Trina to her school tomorrow from here. You will do that now. Oh, no. I'll see you in London presently. You can't condemn me to spend the night here with a schoolgirl. You could always send for Fredelina. <laughs> Good evening. I'm inquiring about uh, an advertisement of yours. Um, the property, Hackton Hall. I is it still for sale? Oh, was it? No. No, just an inquiry. Thank you. He's moved. How's the PM? Delighted. While this country house is still for sale, that estate agent just told me that it is almost sold today, so that can only mean one thing. He's refused to sell the house to Miranda. So he's moved right into my hands. He thought you wanted him to sell to Miranda. So he didn't sell. However many times you've read this, I want you to read it again, inside out. Then you needn't be told that I want to dug out of the files tonight. I had a late night last night. Working for Wilder. Well, tonight you can work for me. The Race Relations Act. What's left of it? After Wilder's broken it. You're on a loser, Lord Bly. 
He's so colour unconscious, he's not even pro-colour. He's simply unaware, temperamentally, there's any problem for him in a personal sense. You're against me in this. The colour question. Forget the colour question. The act is there to be used. Well, I advise extreme caution. <laughs> but you're not my private secretary. You're Wilder's. And you should have advised him not to refuse to sell his house to an immigrant. All that was on the tape. Naranda's name is Hobbs. I believe he did follow his brother's instructions in Malia. I think Wilder could prove it. Well, the more that can be proved about Naranda's good name, the better. Well, that covers the private side of it. Now, the public side of Wilder, you'll find in the files. On three of the occasions that he's gone abroad as ambassador to a colored country, he has either advised the withdrawal of aid, the application of sanctions, or the refusal to sell British elements. On your ministerial instructions. You will not find that in the files. And nevertheless, he complained loudly enough for me to hear. Oh, he does broadcast misleading renderings of my verbal instructions. Henderson would swear on oath it was a true rendering. Henderson? Who's Henderson? His creature? Ha! Whose creature are you, darling? So you'll bring it down to your word against his, then? To his actions. Of which the house is the most important. That doesn't involve your word. Well, I could harvest the files in five minutes. But his actions overseas as a government servant are excluded from the Race Relations Act. There's also the question of official secrets being inadmissible in evidence. One of our more civilized political leaders once said, an ambassador must deal justly and fairly with people of all races, and people of all races must have confidence in him. Now, what confidence? would people have in an ambassador who could be charged with what I must charge Wilder. And the verdict won't matter. The Race Relations Act is a leech. Tear it off and it's still full of your blood. I should like your instructions to search files in writing. Foreseen. Hello, yes, Hackton Hall. Oh, good. I'd uh, half forgotten that the service had ever been suspended. Thank you. I thought I heard the telephone somewhere. Who are you, and where's Trina? I'm Trina. And I know who you are. We met in Malia. No. I was at school here. But I've watched out for you on television ever since you forced my father to leave his own country. I'm to drive you back to school tomorrow. Oh. Do you intend to travel in there? <laughs> I got dirty in the old kitchen. And I went up to change and found this. Your wife? I dare say. They have been diving in and out of her things for the last 20 minutes. I've been looking for the old kitchen for the last 20 minutes. Uh, we won't find anything to eat here. We'll leave that on if you like. I know a country pub that it would suit. We'll dine out? If you'll eat with me when you've heard me speak to your father. Oh, he's gone to Switzerland. I was hoping you'd be able to tell me where I could telephone him. Um, the Imperial Hotel Burn. Where's Pam? Uh, like your father, she had to leave suddenly. <laughs> I was expecting somebody of ten, grey pleats, and a tie. I'm eighteen. I'm going to tell your father that it's useless for him to buy this house. He's going to be deported. Oh, I was afraid of that. I saw the notice going up from the window. How long have you been in England? Since I was eight. But if your father doesn't return from Switzerland, there'll be no deportation hearing. And you can stay as long as you like. Although how you could wish to stay in a country which it takes all evening to make an urgent... Hello. Hello, yes. Yes, my number is 589. I wish to make a call to Switzerland. To the Imperial Hotel Bern. 
Mr. Noranda. Hmm? No, no, not a personal call. I want to know whether he's in, or if he's not, when he will be in. Hmm. Oh, by the way, if I'm out when you call, I shall be at the uh, Garrett Lodge. Yes. My name is John Wilder. Thank you. Oh, he mightn't be at the Imperial Hotel. The number the account man usually invites him to his house. Do you uh, know his number? No. His name? No. More important than that. Will you dine with me? Yes. Why wake me up in the middle of the night to tell me this? Covering yourself? I am his private secretary. Who has just rifled his files. On his minister's instructions, his minister is also mine. Well, I can't phone him. The line isn't on. But if I could, how much time is there? Very little. You mean there's none, Lincoln? Even if, even if we did manage to sell the house to Noranda now, it would only prove his original guilt. Caswell would say it's extraordinary how he changed his mind just as you were collating and collecting the evidence against him. Just in case. If there is a wilder miracle, you want him to know that it was you who warned him. I'm not going to offer you a drink, Lincoln. A miracle or not, if you can believe that, I think you should also have this. The one Sir John thought he'd given you. I removed it thinking it was one of his reports and put on a new blank. Good morning, John. You're unshaven. And you're in the barber's chair. Do you mind? It might take you an hour to read that. It's evidence that I can bring against you. Against me about what? I can summarize in five seconds. Evidence against me about what? I received the Prime Minister's private secretary at 12 o'clock. If by then I have your acceptance of a posting to Burma, in writing, I'll present it to him. If not, I'll show him that. People can work all through the night for me too, John. John? Jill, get me my wife, please. Yes, sir. Hello? If that's Sir John, Martha, tell him I've gone to my solicitor. Yes, madam. Oh, uh, if you've been looking for me, John, I've been down at the... John? Draft my resignation. <laughs> Don't keep looking at your watch. You'll know when it's five to twelve. He'll capitulate. Good morning, Henderson. You said good morning two hours ago, Minister. You didn't know how good a morning. Mm -hmm. uh, will you uh, have a drink? What will you have, darling? The hemlocks. Champagne for victory. Unless, uh, Peter, you'd uh, prefer something else? Well, depends what we're celebrating, Lord Bly. Conquest. <laughs> Your master's in some trouble today. His wife's suing him for divorce. Oh, I got it from her solicitor, Charlie Granger. Used to be in the Treasury. It's an old civil servant he thought we might like to know before the press splashes it. Fredolina. Hmm? No, no. no. It's quite somebody else. Like a photograph out of her files. Her office files. Well, one woman or another is finished. Finished? 
No one can get John Wilder on race relations when he's being divorced for sleeping with that enchanting creature. Don't worry about where I got it from, but this resignation hardly fits the facts now. I'll draft another. Get her, Don. Get her, wherever she is. What's her number? Pamela! Yes? Out. Oh, yes. You put us together for the night. I do not intend to remember that, John, any more than you should think of resigning or going to Burma. I shall instruct Charles to withdraw the suit because I had no idea you spent the night with Trina at the request of her father, Mr. Miranda, to whom you had just sold the house. No seducer you, but chaperone. What is the masculine for that? When? When what? When will you tell Charles? As soon as you tell me, it's true. I tried to get hold of Miranda all night to tell him not to return to this country. Did you succeed? No, I couldn't contact him. Then anyone. don't bother. Just leave things as they are. All Mr. Miranda has to do now is to bring the money he went to get and move into the house. Is that not so, John? Yeah. Yes, it bloody well is. Good morning. Pamela! She's only 18. What made you? How old was Fredalina? With whom you did sleep. That's what made me, John. A little taste of what I can do. Whenever you do. You know I didn't. Darling gave you the tape. I told you he was your man. Yeah. But I still don't know about Fredolina. Do I? Anything I can do, John? How the hell do I know? And I don't know what the hell Pamela has just done. Or why. Oh well, Ambassador. There's nothing unusual in that, is there?